Good day learners! For today's video, we are going to tackle the characteristics of appropriate instructional materials in science teaching. Do you know where is the art in teaching science? There are differences among techniques, method, approach, and strategies in teaching and their significant role in designing instructional materials. So first, what is technique? It is a skill for completing a specific task. And these are the little sneaky tricks we all know and use to get the job done in the classroom. We have here method. It is a way of making process on how you are going to teach effectively. Organized plan. This controls the way something is done. Next is teaching approach. This is your own personal philosophy of teaching and how you deal with your students. Lastly is your strategy. It is a careful plan for achieving a particular goal, usually over a long period of time. Do you think we can teach even if there are no instructional materials? Instructional materials are physical and visible objects having content or information conveyed with a course or subject matter. The best instructional materials are aligned with all other elements in the subject matter, including the learning objectives, assessment, and activities. Instructional materials are essential tools in learning every subject in the school curriculum. They allow the students to interact with words, symbols, and ideas, in the way that develop their abilities in reading, listening, solving, viewing, thinking, speaking, writing, using media and technology. So why it is important? Instructional materials provide the core information that students will experience, learn, and apply during a course. They hold the power to either engage or discourage students. Instructional materials serve as access exploration, absorption, and difference of knowledge and skills as they proceed in a learning process. Therefore, such materials must be carefully planned, selected, organized, refined, and used in a teaching learning process for a maximum effect. In teaching, there are usual instructional materials that can be used. The first one we have, the Rilie. Rilia refers to authentic objects from real life that one uses in the classroom to teach a specific concept. Rilia can be both physical and virtual as long as it is something used in the real world. We have the second instructional materials that can be used is called a model. A model can come in many shapes, sizes, and styles. It is important to emphasize that a model is not the real world but merely a human construct to help us better understand the real world systems. A model is usually a copy of something. Examples are building a model of the earth for science class. Next, we have the text as instructional materials. A text is any stretch of language that can be understood in context. It may be as simple as one to two words such as stop sign or as complex as a novel. Next, we have a graphic materials. Graphic materials include still images of all types such as prints, drawings, photographs, posters, postcards, pictorial advertisements, cartoons, comic strip, and etc. Then we have a display board. Display board is a vertical surface in which information can be displayed to public view. Example is the large display board at the New York Stock Exchange that reports on stocks traded on the exchange. So here are some characteristics of the good instructional materials that will help you in your teaching process. So we have here first, the size. It is a must that the material is big enough to be seen by the farthest students in the classroom. You can also consider the font size and the font style to be used. Next is the color. 
Students are more interested to those materials which are colorful and beautiful. So remember that most students are more attracted to bright colors because it can easily catch their attention. And for the teacher, they can facilitate the learning process well. Next, the durability. Instructional materials are not made for one session only. They must last if possible until lifetime so that it can be reused. See to it that can stand for longer duration of time so that the effort and money you render will not lost in just a glimpse or a snap. Next is the economy. Consider also the salary of the teacher, his expenses in making that instructional materials. They can use the resourcefulness and creativity to produce their own material. If possible, use the cheaper things and making your materials so that it is not a burden to your part. And its portability. Our materials must be easy to handle and carry so that it is more convenient for your part to carry it wherever you will teach. Next, the relativity. So of course, the instructional materials must be related to the topic or lesson you are into. And lastly, its safety. Safety not only when for health but also in culture and emotional aspects. So, that's it everyone. I hope you learned something from this video.